There we go, that's about 25. Oh, baby. Down. Oh, oh, oh. Pour them up today. It doesn't get much better than this. All right guys, so I'm gonna break down the jigging for you. Just completely lay it all out with gear and everything. What I'm using is a seven foot medium heavy bait casting rod right here with a moderate fast action. What moderate would be right in the middle, moderate fast is right up in here. So when I put the load on my rod, you can see it right there. What this rod is gonna do is give me a lot of leverage and it's gonna get a lot of load on the fish in case he swims at me, it will suck up a little line versus an extra fast if you swim at me. I have a lot of power, but it's, my rod's not gonna suck up a lot of line. Uh, this is imperative for faster species like king salmon. The line from there, I'm using 20 pound uh, Flora Clear line, which is a, it's a co-polymer made by P-Line. Real strong stuff. It's not mono, it's not fluorocarbon, it's co-polymer. If you know my line videos, check them out. You'll learn a little bit about that. From there, I'm using a high speed, low profile bait caster at high speed. I pretty much, for high speed, I say 6.3 and up. Uh, the reason for this is if I hit him coming up and he swims up at me, I can pick up a lot of line real fast. I would want even a more limber rod if I had a slower reel to make up that difference for me. And I would use probably 100% monofilament at that point. So now what we're doing is we have a little tiny leader right here going up to a barrel swivel. This is to prevent line twists. We're jigging up and down. So that barrel swivel is going to keep all the line twists out of there and I'm going to a three ounce jig and the weight of the jig, I'm going to show you exactly how to figure that out. So we have current out here. Now if I put my jig down in the water and I'm going to let it get all the way to the bottom and I'm going to bring it up at just a couple of cranks and that's not crucial to catching them and I'm going to hold while I'm drifting. Now, if my jig's straight up and down, it's perfect. If I had too light of a jig, the current would be moving it to the side. And if I had a weird line angle, when I'm bouncing across the bottom, I would be dragging those hook points and therefore snagging a lot more often. And when we're jigging for king salmon, we're bouncing off the bottom. We're causing a reaction strike. So three ounce is just enough for this. Plus, I'll show you something with this three ounce bait versus a two ounce. People are like, man, that's really heavy. You're gonna get snagged a lot. Well, here's the cool part. Let's say you snag a log. Boom, you snag it. Well, you got a three ounce weight. So you start snapping your rod tip, and I'm sure you'll see that in the video, snapping it up and down. And what this three ounce jig is going to do is start hammering back against its own hook, and more often than not, knock your lure free of that snag. So if we got it like this out here, and the reason why we're using dark green and black is because the water's dingy, there's a lot of algae. It's going to help the king salmon hone in on it. So now I'm going to show you what I'm doing. How I told you, too much line angle is a bad thing. So all I'm going to do is thumb the spool and drop it straight down. Just like so. And I'm down to the bottom and I bumped it. I don't want my plug to be hanging out on the bottom. So I want to raise my rod, rod tip up to about 930 max. And the reason for a 930 max is if I'm at the top of my jig and he hits me, I still have leverage to set the hook on the fish. If I jigged all the way up here and he hit it, what am I supposed to do? Just reel to set the hook on him? It's not gonna work that good. 9.30 is about your max. You can get a little bit sloppy around there, but that's where you wanna be. Now, when you touch the bottom, you want your rod tip pointed somewhat down at this angle right here to when I touch. You can see, I'm gonna go down and watch my rod tip. You'll see that thud, boom, right there, and you'll see the line get loose. I have a straight line. Now you see it's loose just like that. I'm touching, and my rod tip's pointed down. If I were digging my rod tip down and I didn't touch, I would want to pop the clutch open, let more line out to make sure I can get down to the bottom and touch like so. So I'm gonna hit the bottom, come back up to 930, follow my line down tight. If I bring my rod down too fast, that line will get loopy and it's not straight and it's sloppy and your hook will come back over the top of the jig and snag the line from the top. So. I'm gonna bring it all the way up, and this is exactly how I'm gonna get started. I take it out of my rod holder, have my leader and my jig right here. I'm gonna go straight down with the drift, let it all the way down to the bottom. As soon as I get down there, I'm gonna engage it and put my thumb on the spool. I don't wanna drag my hooks on the bottom. As Soon as my bait hit, I put my thumb on my spool, I lifted it up, and I engage my clutch, so I'm back in gear. My line's gonna stay straight. I don't want a bunch of slack line. I'm gonna snap it up off the bottom, get that reaction strike, follow it down. As soon as it touches, I'm gonna snap it up and follow it down. You don't wanna drop too quick like that. That's real sloppy. Your hooks will get hung up more often than not. 
and that is how you get them. When they slam it just like that, swing it home and hang on, baby. You're okay. Okay guys, so in this episode, I'm gonna be showing you two different trips that we went on. On um, this trip right here, I took out my pro staffer, JP, AKA the Mud Diver, is a good friend of mine, and he's hooked up into a big female. It's been a while since I've seen you smile, and I wonder Is this your first King Sam? Yeah. <laughs> JP's first King Sam. On tell. Yeah. JP's first King Salmon, a wild female. Prize meat there. There we go, baby. JP's first King. Yeah, and a nice wild. Boy, she's nice. I'll show you something about these fish right here. If you see the adipose fin right here, that little adipose fin, if they have it, they're a wild fish. If it's been clipped, they're a hatchery fish. And if you look up right here, you see that the forehead slopes down towards the nose, just normal, normal like any other fish. That's the trait of the female. Plus the female has the shorter mouth. The male's mouth generally goes back to there and their head sometimes will dip in and then go out to their, to their mouth like this. Instead of just a nice slope, it'll dip in and then go to the nose. And the females tend to be a little bit wider on the head and the males tend to be a little bit narrow. And the male also has a larger adipose fin. It's about three times larger than the females. It's wonder bread time, baby. Two jigs, two other boats. Both snagging the exact same bag, literally with an inch, within an inch of each other. <laughs> Lines did not cross, but they both managed to snag the exact same bag. Amazing. Doug, that was a good fight, huh? Yeah, I was fighting you, I think. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh no! Oh. Oh. Yeah. Now, if you're the type of guy that likes to track down their fish like I do instead of just jumping in and being part of the pack, when it comes to salmon, you need to remember that they're migrating fish. They're looking to go upstream at all times, so what you want to do is you want to run upstream and work your way back. You know, you can look to see if people are catching them, or you can stop at your favorite spots. And you know, what you want to do is you want to target hard bottoms, irregular bottoms, spots that have a lot of current that are also going to have a little cooler water, more oxygen into the water that are going to give those salmon uh, the energy and the power that they need to move upstream. That slack dead water, you know, when it's the right temperature is no good for them. They want to hide behind those little rolling bottoms. And uh, if you're bringing up clams on your hooks, you're often in a good spot. You know, I like to target that shallow water right up next to the bank. Um, what you'll find is you get a much harder, irregular bottom, a lot of clam beds. And these are the sidewalks that those salmon use to travel upstream so that's something you want to do is start upstream drop back until you find them you know and if you rerun that same drift and you don't hit them again you often should know you know that they moved up from there so what you want to do is just move up you know maybe a quarter of a mile or maybe less and then start drifting back again until you hit that school. He then pulls the net straight back. Okay. So it collapses, okay? Good try though. Good try. If you lift up, there's too much resistance. Pull straight back once he's in. Straight back. Straight back. Yeah! Alright, look where that laser minnow got him. Right there in the roof of the mouth. That dude wasn't going nowhere. <laughs> Egg. There we go, that's about 25, 30 pound 
wild male. See that bigger adipose fin that I was talking about right there? And the pointed nose, and his head kind of tapers down from his back and then out to his nose right there? That's your males. Big old fat boy right here. This guy put up a battle. Let's get him in the bottle. He's taking a run. I feel so much like a jack no more. Woo, woo, woo. These laser minnows. I am just putting a beating on these fish. Woo. Almost got me. <laughs> Uh, 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 uh. Head down, don't. Get the net away from him. Okay. Grab the back of the net with your other hand. Gotcha. As soon as you get his head in it, go ahead. And then let go. Okay. Easy. As you know he's going in it, let go of it. Look in that case, if the current moves it on you, you're good. If his head's up, you can net. If his head's down, don't net. All right, so you want to start targeting these king salmon in the rivers around here in Northern California. You know, in the beginning of the fall, as soon as that water temperature reaches about, you know, 70, 71, 72, you're going to have a lot of uh, kings that start moving into the river system. Um, you know, right around the mouths of the bay and where those rivers enter is where you're going to have those guys. Over there, you still have a lot of tidal influx and the water's warmer. So what you're going to find is these king salmon are moving upstream on the incoming tide and a lot of the time they'll perch down to the bottom the hole there in these holes when that water temperature is still around 70 because uh, they don't quite have the energy so they don't want to work against the current but once you get up river and you have that consistent outflow and that water temperature is colder they're going to be moving consistently uh, more often instead of pausing for that um, outgoing tide That's a jack. Nice. Sweet. All right, now let's cut for a quick commercial break. And when we come back, I'm going to show you another trip we took out jigging for king salmon. Hey, what's up, guys? Nick the Informative Fisherman here. And when it comes to spooling up my reels, I choose nothing less than the best. And that's why I use P-Line each and every time. Are you fishing the best? Hey, lion baby. <laughs> Did you ever wish for an RC boat when you were a kid? And do you have a passion for fishing? Well, guess what? It's time to do them both at the same time. With RCFishingWorld.com's RC Fishing Pole, it's time to be a kid again. So visit www.RCFishingWorld.com today. Ever tried pulling a planer board next to your boat when trolling or fishing from a swift current bank? If not, you're missing out on one of the most phenomenal fish catching machines on the market today. With Yellowbird planer boards pulling your lines perpendicular to your boat, you can't help but catch more fish. Find out more by visiting www.yellowbirdproducts.com. Have you been to RustyLures.com? Did you know they offer free shipping on anything over $29.99? And with all the latest and greatest in bass fishing gear from punching tackle, umbrella rigs, swim baits, and you name it, there's really no reason for you not to be getting the best deal online today. So go to www.RustyLures.com. Have you had the chance to fish the baddest hoochie on the market today? That's right, I'm talking about the Shasta Tackle Wiggle Hoochie. One of the most dynamic reaction trout and salmon lures that runs second to no other for pulling and triggering fish into striking. So I guess the real question is, are you catching all the fish you should be catching? Now let's get back to fishing. Hey, what's up guys? Nick the Informative Fisherman here. And out here this morning, we're out here on Garcia Bend on the Sacramento River with my buddies Robert and Mark out here doing a little jigging from uh, Mark's bass boat here. And we're going to jig for some king salmon on some bass gear right here. Have a lot of fun. Smack them. I know Robert's going to try to do a little tail grabbing. We might be on two sides of the fence right there. He just wants to grab that bad boy, but we want to keep him. So we'll see what goes first, the hand or the net. We'll just uh, let that play out naturally and see what we can get on film here for you guys. We'll see you in a sec. You know, when that water temperature comes down from 70, closer to 65, the fish are really going to be on the move. You're going to have a lot more fish coming in from the ocean, a lot more fresh, lively fish, and they're going to be moving around a lot more often. This means you're going to really have to track them down. If you hit them on a drift, you rerun the drift, oftentimes they've already moved on, so you're really going to have to focus in on targeting them. 
you know and if if you predict their movements you can consistently be on those fish instead of you know when you pull up and you see a crowd of boats hitting them you know jump up just ahead of them and start running that drift till you hit them again and then jump up again a lot of guys just get in this repetitive mode to where they keep going over the same spots and they're like hey we're not catching them anymore well it's simple understanding these fish are migrating they're moving up they're not moving out so move upstream and hit them again oh! That's all right. Oh, 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 oh juju, man. No load ever came off of her. <laughs> I don't know what you have. All right, so Rob hooked that last female right there, a nice cromer, and, you know, got her up close to the boat, but she was a little outside my range, and I didn't want to stab at her tail in or give them the opportunity to get that uh, jig hooked up in the net. She just happened to pop loose, you know, when she went back down out of sight. Load stayed on the fish the whole time. Nothing much you can do except stay focused and keep after it. And We'll get some more here, no big deal. You know, I know I said this in the part where I was talking about how to jig, but when you hit the bottom with your jig, that is so much more crucial than bouncing it and not hitting the bottom. If you're swinging over the top of them versus hitting the bottom, when you hit the bottom, it sends up a dust cloud, you know, a, a dirt and silt, and it forces these guys to react. It causes a ton of commotion, and then you snap your jig up from there so it jerks out to the side. You're really forcing these salmon to react to it. And you know, if you do it that way, yes, you are gonna get snagged up a little bit more often, but you're also gonna catch a heck of a lot more fish. So, you know, don't overlook the basics. Hit that bottom, come back up, and don't just get road stare and keep doing it because you're wasting your time out there when you know we're focusing on a few crucial strikes you know when choosing the color um, what I like to focus on is early on when that water temperature is about 70 you still have a lot of algae the water's got a lot of greenery into it so what colors I like to use more often than not is a dark green and a dark black mixture kind of gives that like forest green you know look a little camo to it they really are able to hone in on that pretty darn good and a dark like blood red and black those are two colors that are great around 70 degrees if you're jigging um, you know, the, the bottom's got less visibility, and that way you're guaranteed when they react to it that they can see it, and more than likely they're going to hit it and they're going to get it in their mouth. Um, a lot of other colors, you'll think guys are snagging them because you hooked them, you see them hooked on the outside of the gill plates and everything. Well, what it was is they reacted to it, but they just couldn't really focus in on it and hit it. Uh, once the water temperature gets back down towards the 65, you can start experimenting with other colors. Purples are real popular at that point. And then, you know, below 65 and on, you're going to have fish that are just really aggressive moving in there. The water's going to clean up a little bit more once it's colder, a uh, little bit more visibility, and then your brighter colors start coming into play. Pressure's off, now we're gonna show them. Good stuff, Rob. Good stuff. I'm not, I'm not there we go, baby, getting things done. With Robert out here on the Sacramento River, jigging up some nice king salmon just like this. Let's get some more in the boat, Rob. What do you think, man? Oh, yeah. Now, here's a cool little tip that I can give you guys. If you notice, on slow days sometimes out there in the middle of the water, you'll be jigging and you know, you catch one, two, maybe three salmon out of the whole boat, which is a slow day if you ask me, but the hook's directly in their mouth. You didn't foul hook any of these fish. What that often means is they're taking a break and they didn't want to slash at your lure. They didn't run it, want to run it down. They didn't have much energy. It means you bounce right in front of their nose and they had a perfect shot at it. And that's why it was directly in their mouth. So what you can do is rerun that exact drift. Mark that spot on your graph. If you notice that where you're hitting them, because more often than not, they're still sitting there. And you can go in there and you guys can get your limits real quick. You notice on those days where they have a lot of energy, you're going to foul hook probably 50% of your catches. Sometimes it's going to slip out of their mouth, be out there on the side of their face or in their back. And it's not because you snagged them. You know, contrary to belief, it's much more difficult to snag a salmon than people think when you're vertically jigging. Uh, what happens is they slash at it, and as you were twitching the bait up, you ended up hooking them outside the mouth. But when they have a lot of energy and you're hooking them 50-50 like that, 
uh, you know, keep moving down and don't focus on that same spot. When you, but when you do notice that you catch, you know, one or two with a quarter baby, mile stretch and it's directly in the mouth, run that again because that more than likely means they're taking a break right there. Because uh, you know, when they get it directly in their mouth, there was no missing. That means you hit right in front of their nose. And there's probably more than likely going to be a lot more parked up in that exact same spot. You can go Come clean on, up. Another hatchery fish. About 18 right there. That one might slip through my net. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot, Mark. Appreciate it, man. <laughs> we lost one. Oh! <laughs> All right, go get mama. Go get mama. That was a steelhead. Was it? Yeah, that's pure chrome right there. Now, if you're wondering, this is a pass off. <laughs> For being considerate, because I keep getting skipped over and I lost a giant and then lost a little steelhead. So Mark's being a nice guy and watch him. There we go. <laughs> You know, like I said, if you see me close to the bank here, not right out in the middle of the river, in the middle of the river, the fish have the opportunity to spread out and they're not as tight. I fish a little closer to the bank. Uh, when, when it's from 65 to 70 degrees, I like to find that 19 to 23 foot water column and look for that rolling bottom. When I get in there, the salmon tend to push up to the shore and move back out. So it's kind of like a sidewalk. They're more crowded together. It's a wall. They have to turn back out and come across me at that point. And I find that I cross a heck of a lot more fish being closer to the bank than I do out in the middle of the river, uh, you know, where the you know the current is not moving often as hard or rolling over objects creating oxygen. And that's why those salmon get in there. They're looking for that colder water, they're looking for oxygenated water and that hard bottom. So being closer to the bank more often than not is gonna be a much higher percentage area for salmon traveling than right out in the middle of the main river. No, no, I'm grabbing them. I'm grabbing them, dude. You got me excited about it. As long as I don't take that jig to the face, we'll be good. Oh, oh. <laughs> he shot out of there when I touched him. You get a big backlash? <laughs> yeah. All right. I would use the net. No, no, no. I want to grab him by the tail now, Robert. Yeah, got... after this bird's nest, you're going to like tail grab him. Down. Robert's got me interested. <laughs> <laughs> he gave him like a second win. Woo, come here, buddy. <laughs> How many of these have you tail grabbed, Rob? Three. Three? Four. All right, I've never tell grab one, so <laughs> they, were all, yeah. they were all jacked, so you, you know. So, uh, <laughs> I can't. <grab> one. <laughs> you got to, you know, just all four grab pound it. jack. Hold on. This yeah. one's probably about 18, 18, 18, I'm guessing. Well, you may take a treble hook to the hand. That's all right. And my wife is gone. Oh. <laughs> All right, so what was going on there, we weren't overly concerned about getting the fish into the boat. It's illegally hooked. Even if it slips out and hooks them down here, legally you gotta let them go. They got a gas on the outside, they can say it's a snag. So, uh, Rob's tail grabbed these things before. I've never tail grabbed them. I thought it'd be really fun to give it a shot and uh, fight a foul hook fish and then uh, try to grab a big old hen like that. But uh, unfortunately, she broke off. It happens, but it was still fun. It's on. <laughs> it's already on. Did I miss an opportunity? Got to catch up with you guys, man. Oh! oh. Didn't catch up. Yeah. 
just send the whole boat into chaos and get you fixed. <laughs> 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 just gonna tire the boy off. Got the drag set just about right. You can stay. Take him for a walk. Okay, that line starting to. I don't know if Robbie even knows how to use it. Yeah, I don't. You know how to use it? Yeah, I don't. I never do. You know how to use it? I don't know if you know how to use it. Get him to take another run before you try and net him. Right there, right there. There you go. Very nice. Let's go. There it is. Last one of the day. Maybe the biggest one. And this was a. Uh... I backed off the drag considerably on this one, just trying to let him burn himself. About to lose another one. Right. <laughs> 14 hook up? I don't know. I, I stopped after I ran out of finger. So I can see my line jerking back and forth. It's probably another snag fish, but still a great fight. But this is going to become Rob's moment because Rob is going to tail grab this one. <laughs> I screwed up already, but I'm putting the pressure on him. Let's put the net away. Let's put the net away, Mark. There's no reason for this. Rob doesn't believe in nets, so we're gonna keep that going for him. I think he netted his first fish today and it hurt his feelings. After about two boxes of tissues, I think he's all right, but we're gonna have him tail grab this, this monster, see what happens. Oh yeah, look at that. It turns out this fish was hooked in the tail, so I wasn't gonna have Rob try to take a tail grab with this one, and, you know, unless he wants to risk it and get stuck in the hand like I would. Get him, Rob. Well, if Al hooked this big hen, I'm gonna toss her back in. Oh, yeah! She's gonna toss me in at the same time. Fish of the day. Here she goes. Get on there. done out here on the Sacramento River. We decided to keep a few. We let a lot go. We were being good sportsmen about it, but absolutely tore them up today. It doesn't get much better than this. Thanks for watching. Oh, ho, ho. Merry Salmon Christmas. <laughs>